All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. We'd love you to support this show. Please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Your likes and subscription helps us to grow and attract interviews and content. So please retweet and share our posts. Your contributions are appreciated. Welcome to episode 435 of the Kiss FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Today we've got Marcus Almighty Mark. St. Louis Kiss Lonnie. What's up? And the voice of reason, the one and only. Voice, hello. You need, you need your theme music, Ken. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, and just to, to let everyone know, Saturday morning, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, I believe, um, the Scandinavians are taking over and doing a live stream episode, so Daniel's going to be hosting that with some of our Scandinavian brothers from Assorted Podcast, to be hopefully talking about um, Kiss from the Scandinavian Perspective in English, which... Uh, no. We'll all no, be able to follow along. So translators it, needed. Yeah, no translate. No translators. They speak better English than all of us. So yeah. uh, there we go. Do do check that out. Uh, I'll be publicizing the stream um, in the usual places, and there'll be another episode dropping on Sunday. So you're getting your Kiss FAQ cup runneth over this week. All right. Before we get into today's news topics and comments, Mark, what's going on with your project Gemini and other projects? Okay, so just to let everybody know, uh, all the albums are signed and the posters, I'm just going to be picking them up soon. I had to get them uh, re-spotted, like retouched up a bit, uh, but they're getting done now. So everything is ready uh, next week, I believe, or the week after I go and drop off everything back to Train Records. And we nervously wait for the pressing of the vinyl finally to get done. Once that's done, it gets dropped over back to me and then... I will proudly show it to everybody, and they will go to our, my fine distributors uh, that I have awaiting them to send out to various people around the globe. So just a little bit more patience is required, and you will have the In the Year 373 Book 3 Root Beer, root beer Translucent Vinyl version of the album. Uh, also, don't forget October 31st, the new Dark Monarchy album, Kyo, Kyo Oskero, I can't pronounce that properly, uh, comes out. On Halloween uh, in digital form but there will also be a CD pre-order coming up before then so if you want to order a CD version there's going to be another digipack version of it coming out uh, with all the usual excellent artwork done by Steve Holland in England there my main man behind the camera he does some amazing stuff so there'll be some more great graphics stuff in the package as well uh, other than that uh, I'm about well I'm, I'm done writing the next project gemini album i started recording it already so there will be another one in 2023 and maybe it won't take as long this time to get out keep your fingers crossed yep there we go and i just got off a podcast with andy moyen that's going to drop on sunday for anyone coming to san pedro for our cruise fest and other events um andy and i are well i'm going to be at godmothers on the evening of the 27th and the 28th and at the double tree for cruise fest during the days uh selling a whole bunch of different books so my books gold mines and pictures alive by steve roney and uh, Scott Davis, um, along with back titles. So all the information will be in that show. In that show that drops on Sunday, along with the debut of the Mass Kisteria, or the the world premiere or reveal the Mass Kisteria artwork, which Claudio Bergman absolutely knocked out of the park. All right, let's get into some comments from the last episode, Mr. Ken. Okay, I got a few, a few here. Uh, uh, see, the last episode was about uh monster uh mm -hmm. kiss monster so here's one from strutter 72 uh he says worst album in the kiss catalog in this episode review of this monstrosity of an album further just justifies my personal opinion period so we were great the worst podcast ever for that episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> Great episode, guys, he says. Uh, another one is from Fred Escher. Uh, Monster is by far one of my favorite Kiss records, period. 
fan since 75. Every song is powerful and strong. Paul brought the goods for this record. How can any fan say it's not... Hold on, i got to hit the button. <laughs> not uh, as not... Wait. How any fan could say it is not is beyond me. In my opinion, it is ace. It is ace is an on it. <coughs> what? In my opinion, it is ace is an on it. And the fact Tommy and Eric wear the makeup. Sure, I'm sure. The songs are well crafted and the solo and bass tones are phenomenal. It sounds just like Love Gun with a mm. mix of here and there, Monster Rules. Interesting hey, opinions. Oh, there like is no good. there is no incorrect opinion. Yeah, there's no right or wrong on that. Um, here's a star pod log and star star pod truck star pod trick podcast. Oh, Star Trek. All right, that's all right. I remember reading about release dates and Hit Parader magazine and calling my local record store every day to find out if they put it on the shelf. Yeah, so that, yeah. We so that was that was over my release dates uh, <laughs> thing. So yeah, um. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do uh, one more. Uh, it's from wait, I like Jay Fry TV's comment. Another great episode, boys. Okay, I like that. I like those sorts of comments. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, oh yeah, I saw that one too. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's always good. Uh, what's this one, Christian Min seventy three? Uh, Kiss fans since 78 here. My first albums were Paul Stanley's 78 solo and and Alive. I was hooked from the first listen and I bought the entire back catalog and loved those albums um, so much. I was a Kiss fan through the years when many others got off the train with Dynasty and Mass, Music from the Elder and Creatures. Monster is one of my favorite uh, Kiss albums. Muddy production, yes, but great songs. Yep, again, so, no wrong answer. So comments. so that actually brings in a great part of the first, you know, kind of conversation piece today is Amazon dropped the price of the Creatures of the really? Night Super Deluxe Edition box set to 177 bucks. Which yeah. US or Canadian? US. No no one can no one spends America, Canadian money. One. America. America. <laughs> eh? So it's so it's still like nine million dollars for me it's, to buy. It's still nine million dollars, but you know, you still got health care, and we just get cheaper creatures yeah. of the night, super just deluxe. Use so, US dollars. Yeah, if actually, I had that many. How far? How far is the border from you? Yeah, can you uh, run across the border? Probably about an hour to get to Buffalo. There That's you not go. Bad. Drop it's ship not... it. Drop it. Ship it to a UPS store in Buffalo and drive on down. Well, then again, your gasoline prices are. No, if you go to Amazon and get one of those Amazon box, you know they'll ship it to an Amazon box kind of locker thing. And then you store. just have, you have to smuggle it through so, customs and not get hit the... with uh, import but, duty. But I do have a feeling, up. though. I do have a feeling, though, it's going to be lowered. There was a few people talking about it before, saying that when this started happening, that it also started going lower on Amazon CA as well. So. I'm I'm going to be Probably patient will. because I do want to get this one, even though I did order the the blue vinyl three LP version too. But I do want to get this one unboxed. But I, I'm going to be patient because there's, they still have destroyer boxes still available. So yeah, it's those not are like, down too. Yeah, yeah, and those are down too. So yeah. I probably might even grab, try to grab both of them. I would have tried to grab one of those two now, but you know, can you believe it costs seven hundred bucks to bury a, a seven, not even a set, like a four pound cat. That's how much they charged, you know, for to, to check up euthanasia and uh, cremation. It cost me six hundred and twenty-two dollars with taxes. Yeah, unbelievable. That's brutal. You get you got you got to spend what you got to spend though. What's important? Oh, he was. I, I was. There was no point in arguing about. It. I mean, he deserved that and more, in my opinion. But it's still, it's a pretty expensive business, you know. It is. Oh, it always is. Lonnie, had you purchased before, or did uh, that change your... <laughs> I had not. I was, I was biding my what? time. And, um, what a Kiss fan are you? I know. <laughs> I was biding was my revenge. time. revenge. Well, no, well, yeah. Well, what happened was, is that I had ordered, last year I had ordered the, um, the Destroyer off of Kiss Online, 
And then like, the release day came, and I don't have it, and I got pissed, and I just ended up just canceling my order and ordering it off of Amazon. So I didn't order it off of Kiss Online when it was announced. And I was like, oh, no, I'll just get it off of Amazon when it came out. And, and I, I've been just kind of watching it and watching it, you know. And, and you know, a lot of people just signed up for that, that nice price, whatever it was. And on Amazon, you get it for the for the, for the cheapest price if you pre order it off of that. So um, I saw it today, and I screenshot it and sent it to you, boys. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing yeah. this now. This is you know, this is perfect. So I sent yeah. to you and I sent to Odell. And we're both like, yeah, we're doing this right now. <laughs> Same here. I mean, I, I only ordered it when I got the link from you. I'd been just waiting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've had some problems with orders from, I usually get all my stuff through uh, Universal um, U Music because mm-hmm. I build up credit that I can then right. use mm-hmm. as discounts on future purchases and get spin the wheels and all that VIP crap, which does actually come in handy. And that's why I'm able to get the off the soundboards like nine bucks um, from other purchases. But for, you know, the last order of my off the soundboard or to the CD, I still don't have it. They sent me the Violet <laughs> LP and then sent me an apology email saying, we're sorry for sending you the wrong item. Didn't ask for it to be returned. We'll send you the CD uh, as well. So I'm still waiting for the CD. I've got an unwanted Violet LP. I'll uh, buy the Violet LP. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, you you can have a, a good discount on that then because uh, uh, I I do not need it now. Creatures I've been looking forward to. I did get the review stream this week and I just finished writing my review today, so that'll be dropping in a couple of weeks, uh, not before November the first certainly. Um, and I think it'll be it'll be revelatory because uh, or revelatory as well. Both both of the words. Because I did come up with quite a lot of uh, documentary stuff that wasn't available during the creation of the project that I've worked into my review, which is an over-review narrative. But I enjoyed writing the musical aspect of it after hearing the review stream. And I'm not going to offer any spoilers. Wait for the review or wait for the box set as well. And I'll uh, make sure that the review is posted with the spoilers thing for people who don't want to have any you know information about the product before they get to listen to it for themselves and that's a very important experience especially when you're spending 177 or even more in other markets on the product for you to be able to enjoy it the way that you want to all right let's get into some of the topics today you know is just some of the stuff off the board uh, this week. But, you know, if you haven't had time to think about it, I'm going to ask you a question during the show about uh, the crew starting in a few days. And with this supposed to be the last time that the band performs on board, if they were to dig out some rarities, and Paul has posted Twitter shots of him rehearsing, you know, what are like three songs that you would you really think they need to be digging out, either never performed or revisiting? I know Lonnie's sitting there going, I already know, man. I want to hear Out of This World. I want to hear three of those monster songs. More again. monster. You know, More but, monster. you know, when, when we get, you know, just in case you haven't had time to think of it, and especially Mark, who's uh, processing other stuff, um, that'll be it. But The End of the Road was announced this week, four years ago. And we're yeah. about to go into the fifth year of The End of the Road <laughs> in yeah. 2023. Let's talk about the shows that you've seen, where we're at with the end of the road, and where you think they should be going in 2023 with it. I mean, other than off the road. Um, Lonnie, let's start with you. Um, so I saw them early on. I saw them in February of 19 in Memphis, and then I saw them in St. Louis in September of 19, um, and have not seen a show since. But I mean, and, and they were great shows. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I, th- I thought the production on this new, on the on the, the new tour w- was fabulous. Um, it's for me, it, it's a little difficult that we're going into the fourth year of this tour, which is crazy. And we're going to re- obviously, if we're going to do you know major markets in. North America, which is kind of what it seems to me anyway. Are we really going to tour for the fourth year with the same set list? And I know, I mean, not even shaken up a little bit, not even rearranged even a little bit. Um, it's, think, think about four years. Think, four years is the same amount of time between the debut album and the solo albums. 
I mean, Kiss changed a lot in those four years, <laughs> and we've been we've been jogging in place for the last four years on this end of the road tour. And and, and don't get me wrong, this, like I, I started off with, I said those shows that I saw in nineteen were great. Um, and I and, and I've had, I could have traveled to another show this year. They played Louisville, um, that louder than life thing. Um, a couple of weeks ago, and that's less than four hours. That's four hours for me to get to Louisville. I mean, I could have done it, so it's not out of the question. But at the same time, it's like I don't know. Do I? Do I? And if and if I'm having that argument with myself, do I need to go see that? That casual Kiss fans really got to be having is really going to be having the same, you know, with with inflation and everything else going on in the world today. Do I really need to go spend more spend that money to go see the same Kiss show I saw four years ago? I don't know. Yeah. No, the, the, I'm, Mark, the, how often have they been up to Canada during those years? You know, and, you know, what's your take on it from the Great White North? <clears throat> well, I'm pretty sure they were here once. And I was supposed to go. Something happened. I didn't end up going to it. Um, I'm not sure if it was family related or what it was, but they hadn't. I don't think they've come back here since. Not in Toronto, I don't think. Um so it, it's kind of interesting because would I go now? I don't know. I mean, it's pretty pricey here for most things Kiss related. For some reason, we were just talking about the Kiss bo- those box sets, how they dropped in uh, on Amazon.com, but not on CA yet. But in Canada, it seems like everything is pretty expensive. Anyways, concerts are very expensive. I'm sure they're expensive in America too. Don't get me wrong. But uh, you know, right now, if it, if, if they announce the show tomorrow. For, for Toronto, I probably wouldn't be able to go just because of certain things, but I might go if there was one more go around here in Toronto because I haven't seen it. I mean, I've seen enough video of it to kind of know what the show is going to be top to bottom. You know, having seen a couple of full shows on here, I did watch them. They were, they're, they're entertaining. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, I was talking to one of my friends online, a fellow musician guy, and we were. He asked me uh, what I'm doing of late, and I said, you know, I do a Kiss podcast. And he kind of smirked at me. He goes, Ah, Kiss, the band that's on that. What is that called? The End of the Road tour. He goes, Man, that's a pretty damn long road they're on there. He goes, How long has that been now? He goes, I, I thought the tour usually takes maybe two years tops to do. Like, like they're really milking this, aren't they? I go, Well, look, there was COVID, and they had to stop a couple times and do this stuff. And he, he just smirked. He goes, Okay, I know you love Kiss, and. You know, I'm not going to badmouth them. I go, no, no, I'm not trying to defend them. But, you know, it, it's starting to become, amongst some people, I find a bit of a joke, this end of the road thing, you know, because they could have easily have ended at any time now. I think they're just doing it now for a little bit more of this. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing that there has to be some kind of reason why they've held out on the final concert date i'm still kind of finding this suspicious they should have had a final date announced already come on man i mean really how how much longer are you guys going to do this before you finally announce the the, the finality of this i still think it's because they're trying to lure in a few people to de- appear on the show and the, those people are playing hardball and i think that they want the, that in otherwise it's just going to be another concert in people's eyes that but it's just the last one they want it to be the big kiss spectacular show them how the big boys do it spectacular at the end, but they're probably having trouble getting people to commit to it. So that's what I think. Well, didn't Bruce say wrong, in an interview he hadn't even been officially asked? Well, there, there you go. So, and they're not going to they're not going to compete as the big boys with Taylor Hawkins tribute concert, are they? You know, no, but 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 that is still I don't. But don't you guys honestly find it suspicious that they has, they haven't announced yet the actual finality, the last show yet? I don't. I always thought this was going to go on way longer than it was um, advertised as, and then COVID comes into the mix, and that takes out from March 2020 through early 2021. I can't remember when they went back on tour. I think it was during the summer of 2021. Um, you know, I, again, I, I, I saw plenty of sh- I, you know, I went to Vancouver for the the first night yeah. went to the LA forum so that I could see kiss at the forum. I went to Madison square garden so I could see kiss at the garden. You know, th- those were two, I don't need to go to the final show because I've seen kiss at the garden and the forum now, mm-hmm. uh, for, you know, my personal kind of 
hit list. And un unless it's something spectacularly special, it's just a unnecessary kind of ego trip where there's going to be a bunch of fuck nuts with a lot of money there. You know, it sounds been, like a yeah. cruise. Well, I've, I've been trying. I've been trying to buy <laughs> buy tickets for the Aerosmith residency because it, my show got canceled because of Steven's rehab, and now it's like super high priced, and you have to buy two tickets. It, it's like mm. you can't buy oh, a boy. single unless you get a resale ticket, and all those sorts of shenanigans, you know, which I just don't want to be a part of. You know, so what's a final Kiss show going to look like? You know, I'm actually still happy that they're out there to a certain extent because if the people are still going to these shows, yeah, there are going to be markets where people economically or otherwise, there aren't enough people who can or want to go to a show. But they're still pulling in decent, you know, um, box office grosses without even taking into account all the meet and greet crap added oh. on. So as, okay. long as, as long as there's a customer still wanting to be served then bend over but you know it, it makes me wonder though then what wh where is where does their heart lie in this like do they actually want to retire or are they now just having too much fun and seeing too much cha-ching coming in to say you know what uh, Money. maybe we don't want to retire Mark, maybe we Mark. maybe we want to stay where does you their know? heart lie it's kiss and people are spending money, and we're going to keep on taking it. Come but, but, on. But, they, but they were, these are the same people that were saying, oh, I don't see myself wearing a 50-pound costume at 70-some-odd some years old. Uh, come on, I have some more dignity than that. But then, you, but then you get there. I didn't see myself still running the KISS FAQ or d putting up with any of that crap. You know, right. 2007, okay. I blew it so up. Then, 2008, so then I wanted to blow it up. So was it a mistake calling at the end of the road? No, it, it's no. the last tour. The last tour. It doesn't mean they're going to stop playing live. It's the last tour ever. Okay, but it doesn't. But it doesn't that, seem that way. It seems like they keep touring and touring and touring, no matter what. There won't what. be tours. They'll just pop, pop up at these festivals and and other things, or Las Vegas, or whatever. God. The, the, the original farewell tour was announced in two thousand. <laughs> and by two, okay, hold on, hold on. The original farewell tour was announced in two thousand. And three years later, in 03, they were back. So that was three years, and they were back. Here we are, four years, and we're on the same tour. Yeah. Well, that was a little <laughs> bit different because they made it to, uh, through the October run of dates. And October the 7th, afterwards, Peter said, I'm not going past my contract. Renegotiate. So the farewell tour ended kind of as it should have within the five-year period of the original reunion contract. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, they come back. This end of the road, it is all about money. As long as they are making money, and I would love to know how much they are making off the guitar, instruments, meet and greets, and all the non-actual concert tickets um, side of things, because it must be more than enough to justify staying out on the road. Now, Lonnie made the point that the set has not changed. The set has barely changed. I think there have been one or two songs here and there, and if anything, it's contracted. And it keeps uh, shrinking, yeah. Yeah, and you know what? I'm glad I didn't go to Aftershock the other week because they cut fucking Deuce from the set list. Sick, really. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys live close. You guys could have went to a show recently. Yeah, too. we could have went to that one. Yeah, yeah I live, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing Deuce. So did you guys. Yeah, yeah. Time. Imagine, I I hate going to Sacramento. Even when I go at 5 a.m. and there's no traffic except me and the CHP. And it's if I'd driven up there for an evening show and come back afterwards, because I didn't want to see all those other freaking bands on the bill. I don't care about all I And I, come on, I don't like audiences. I would have been so bummed out by Deuce being skipped because that is my one kiss jam. That is mm -hmm. the one song. You know, I don't care if they you know, run out of time, I can't do rock and roll all night, or Psycho Circus doesn't queue up on tape properly. Deuce is, a, you know, holy ground for me. That's probably the we're, first Kiss song I ever heard. So, we're still, you know, we're still waiting for the uh, uh, announcement of the 100, 100 dates. So do we get it this, do we get it this coming week with... You know, while while we're on the cruise, it has been becoming. Uh, like a you know what? That's you might be right. It might be announced sometime during the cruise, like Halloween or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> so, and 
They've done that before. Mm -hmm. They've done that. Yes, before. they have the fuckers. So here's a question for you guys. Then, are are Kiss fans too easily satisfied? I mean, you just said that the setlist hasn't changed. You know, nothing's really changed on the five years that they've done this thing. I mean, are people going back to see the same show over and over and over, and they're they're happy with this? I mean, I know a lot of bands. I mean, it's like, you know, just like you guys, I'm sure you you follow other bands besides Kiss, obviously, right? But I mean, I know most other fans from other groups won't wouldn't be too pleased about that that they that they're seeing the same show all the fucking time i mean some bands actually make it a point of not doing that i mean they're not that they're my favorite band or anything but pearl jam has been known to play n different shows on a nightly basis i know it's a different thing they don't have a kind of choreographed show and this and that but i mean give me a break i mean they at least they change up their set list to make it worth following around but that's why i think bands like and I don't like this band either, the Grateful Dead and stuff like that, why they have these people that follow them city to city to city is because they're not going to get the same fucking show all the time. They, they, they These things change, you know, sometimes nightly. I mean, are, are KISS fans just one of these people that are just like, yes, yes sir, I, I like what's going on, take my money and that's it? I mean, come on, truthfully, come on, what do you think? Well, look, that was another topic on the board this week about Judas Priest. What bands mm -hmm. that still get, well give a shit about the music supposedly do no judas priest i think as was rightfully mentioned in the thread is playing a different level than kiss they're mm -hmm. doing everything they can to keep people in theaters which is a whole different kind of demographic than what kiss mm -hmm. is catering to but they sh shook up their set list by throwing in songs and hopefully you're enough of a priest fan that you recognize some of these titles riding oh, on yeah. the wind first time since 2005 yeah. jawbreaker first time <laughs> since 2015 yeah. never the heroes from the latest album firepower live debut beyond the realms of death first time in seven years um judas rising off you know, mm -hmm. Angel of Retribution, yeah. Yeah. for those who don't know. Between the Hammer and the Anvil, first time since 2009. Genocide, mm -hmm. off the fucking uh -oh. mighty stained class. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first time since 82. Ooh. And then Screaming for Vengeance. I mean, Jesus. Uh, the pipes Actually, isn't on Genocide wrong. off of Sad Wings of Destiny? Uh, yeah. I think it's stained class. I, no, I, I, I think it's... It might be oh, no. whatever. Um, okay, you know, sad wings or staying class are the two very best priest albums, bar yes. none. And yeah, you are right. Sorry, uh, get staying class in the mind. I was thinking Invader. Sorry. Um, so all of those songs are thrown into a set for Judas Priest. Meanwhile, Kiss is trimming Deuce. You see what I mean? Like, what? 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 What, what, what would you think you know i mean this is why I sometimes when i have to like d debate with my other friends like even non-musician friends about kiss sometimes I'm, I'm, f I'm finding myself on shaky ground here because you know they're shortening their set list they're doing this and that and people are still dropping huge coin to go see this i mean people are people are questioning it now i mean you know look i know i'm going to be egged this week i can see it already in the comments oh mark doesn't like kiss he's not a real kiss fan but you know what I mean, think about it. You're the ones who are dropping these hundreds of dollars to see the same fucking show all the time. You know, who's the who's the dumb one here? I mean, I'd I, I'd rather go Ooh, and play. Man. I'd rather go and see a show that that at least is somewhat of a surprise to me. Like Judas Priest. I'm telling you, if they were to come to Toronto anytime soon, I think I probably missed them. They probably were here. But you know, the next time they come, I'd go for sure because I know that they they will give me something that I'm entertained by that way. You know. I saw them three times on the on this tour, um, three years in a row. It was broken up by years, but uh, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it every time I was there. Even though you know maybe one song was different from the very first one, and then three years later a different one. There might have been one change, but uh, it's just about more about the experience and and. and enjoying the whole the live atmosphere mm -hmm. of, of the show um you know so i don't know you know i'll be sitting on my rocking chair saying you know what i saw kiss back when they had 18 pods <laughs> that's right <laughs> and, uh, yeah. 
because <laughs> getting they that's all, all the that's pots. all been reduced but ken's absolutely right in that sense and maybe that's why i haven't felt the urge i mean i had tickets for that other show what was it last year um and i wasn't able to go due to health reasons um but mountain view yeah, yeah mountain view and you know front row yeah. had vip and all that yeah. but i had the the experience again march 2020 before the world fell you know, really was the best KISS experience show-wise for me. It wasn't just front row or backstage that or catching a drumstick. God, like Detroit Rock City. Um, I mean, <laughs> it really, it was the audience around me being with Ken, you know, front row at a KISS show, um, you know, having that kind of eye contact with the band. And yeah, it was the same damn songs, basically, that I saw in Vancouver from the, what was I think, 8th or 14th row there. It is more than just going to a, a concert. It is entertainment, and it is a show. And that is different than what maybe what a real band does. A real band gets out and plays and isn't afraid to throw in songs that are rarely performed. And a lot of them can play those songs um, that are rarely performed. Yeah, and, and, you know, Paul Stanley cannot... I mean, they can't do a bunch of other songs. I mean, they don't. they have no recordings... <laughs> Uh, that they can use for that. The only person where they can change the songs on is going to be, you know, Gene. If he can remember the lyrics. If, if he can remember, well, the pr teleprompter or whatever. Right, right. So um, he's the only one they can really switch songs out for uh, on the on the tour. They could do it if they wanted. Which is why they should be using Tommy and Eric more. <laughs> True. All right. Well, I yeah, agree. why don't you... Play, you know, play nothing to lose like they did in, on like a live 35 with with yeah. Eric, with Eric yeah, singing yeah. the majority of it. You know, you you could still do things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I I don't want Tommy singing "Shock Me," but he could do an AC vocal or Rocket one of Ride. his own damn songs. I mean, either of Rocket his Ride. songs are decent enough to be performed live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but again, that's just not realistic, is it? And neither is because again i do think the show is shortening for a reason i don't think it's because they're trying to bilk the audience i think there is a need at this age for them to kind of cut down on the daily wear and tear it's just unfortunate that the road goes on and on and on and it is the same the same they got to change the tour book they got to change the t-shirts they got to do something with the staging mm -hmm. next year they don't need to do it anniversary well, they don't need to do a complete revamp, but it would be nice if they would do something that is more representative of the band's history on tour. You know, get mm -hmm. rid of the cherry picker arms, you know, maybe put in some stairs. Again, it's all easy just to kind of spitball the ideas, but it needs a shakeup. If they're going to continue for 100 dates, 100 dates sounds like more than mm -hmm. enough dates to justify actually spending some money on revamping the stage or bringing yeah. if they still have any of the old staging bringing it back out um mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. hell someone did just build a tank recently maybe they can hire that for uh eric you rent that <laughs> or g or just g since it's now an ego ramp uh, just for gene to stand on you know how about that here, here gene here, here's a tank for you only, to stand only on only Vinny can do that yeah all right Let's see what what else. Ah, well. All right, let's talk about those three songs that you would love the band to dig out as one of the rarities on the cruise. Lonnie, I I made fun of you at the beginning of this, so let's it's okay. It's easy see. to do. Let's see. Let's see if any monsters <laughs> uh, monster songs made your three that they should dig out. Which three and why? No, I would like to hear. She, because it's it's mm. deep but not too deep. And I think it's realistic that they could dig out. She it's one of the, I mean, I know it's undressed to kill, but it's one of the, to me, it's still one of the original kiss tunes being that it's, you know, from the wicked luster days. Um, and it features both Gene and Paul. I think she would be a very appropriate song to hear. Um, another one I would like to hear is let me know. Let me know is one of my favorite kiss songs. And Again, I like you know it's it's Gene and Paul, and and I think that'd be appropriate as well. Um, it's it's rare, but it's not that rare. 
you know, it's on the original album. It's not that rare. And then for a third song, you know, let's 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 pull out that elder stuff again, you know, and let and let's do I one more time on the cruise. I think that'd be fun as well. Nice. Ken. I'm going to take it from a little different angle um, in a way. Um, I think they should celebrate side four of at least a few of side, like side four of Alive 2. And it, it is the anniversary time of year for Alive 4. It's been 40, you know, 45 years. So I'd say do, you know, six, you know, six foot all, all American man and larger than life. And let uh, Tommy sing Rocket Ride. Oh, <laughs> the board will blow up and Julie will have to start banning oh. people. What are you doing to Julie? I, I just love the, I, I love the hear, I hear, like banning people. Do it. So I, I would go that. Celebrate the uh, Alive 2 uh, anniversary and do three songs from that. I actually, I like that idea, actually, since I did say that Tommy should sing more. And I think Rocket Ride is one of those songs that was criminally, I've said it before, it was criminally mm-hmm. never performed live by the band. So mm-hmm. yeah. why, the, why the hell not? Um, I'm, I'm going to let Mark go last because I do have a monster song. Because when I said I wanted Tommy Ooh. to sing more, you know, out of this world. Mm-hmm. Or when lightning strikes. Either. I don't care. You know, mm-hmm. out of this world, I actually, I do dig it. That'd be kind of fun for him just to do that because I think it would make some veins pop. Um, another one with next year being the 50th anniversary. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. I think for the, for the cruise, though, Strange Ways. What's a song yeah. that really hasn't been performed? You could do it, no. And sweet pain. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, I like that. I dig that. No, which supposedly was. I mean, they've actually they have been pretty cool on a lot. Most of the cruises, with a couple of notable exceptions, like the one I went to. The one Julian went on. Um, <laughs> yeah, paid paid them to watch them rehearse. Yes, perfect. Still, still not over it. Yeah, still butthurt about that. God damn it. Um, you know, but they have pulled out some good songs during. I, Elder, they've done it. And I, I think that moment can never be re- recaptured uh, at the end of that show when they went into I. That's just one, that is one of the coolest things um, to have happened. But um, Strange Ways and Sweet Pain are really, cool. yeah, really neglected. No, Mr. Speed. Fuck that. that. All right, Mark, what you got? So I did like Ken's idea about the side four from Alive, too. Yeah. I would suggest uh, hard, Larger Than Life would be a song that I think that would go over very well. It's a song that Gene can do, so Paul doesn't have to worry about it. He can just play and run around and do all his moves and, you know, rock out. But I, I have another suggestion, and I will use video to just kind of help show my idea here why not do something from the one of their solo records you know mm-hmm. why not get paul to do something from his solo album get gene to do something from his solo album you know obviously it'd be a blasphemy to get them to do something from peter's or aces without peter or ace being there right but those two could do something from the one of their al- solo albums i think it'd be a, a really cool surprise to to have done you know and, and it'd be something unexpected, and I think that the people would actually really enjoy it because I think that yes, there's some, there's quite a bit of I guess general public audience people coming to it, but don't forget there are a lot of people back in the day who probably remember the solo album period pretty well, maybe when they were in their teenage years or whatever, and you know if they were to play something from that and show on the screens, you know the, that the album cover from that period they might even go in the audience and say hey i remember that album i actually my my brother had or i bought it when i was younger and it might be something that might they might actually enjoy hearing you know this is the kind of thing that i think that maybe they don't you know think about maybe they don't give a shit about thinking about those kinds of things but you know i i think that it would be cool to hear them do you know move on from paul's or you know radioactive or something else i mean radioactive would know we well i think on the cruise when they did it right 
So why why not pull it out and and, and do it on on a show like this? It's only two songs, and then you know, larger than life. There, there you go. Three. Those would be three songs that people would be like, "Wow, I can't believe they're actually playing that." And I think people would forget about the fact that the rest of the show is the same. That's what I think. So, so what do you guys think they do? Do you th- the, for the crew? Do you think they really shake it up, or do you think they just sprinkle, sprinkle? Drip, drip, maybe, you know, one or two rarities in there and just play at the end of the road set. Uh, uh, honestly, and I'll just be quick because I, I don't want to take up everybody's time all the time. Uh, I think, honestly, that depends all on Paul. If Paul's going to go in there and say, yeah, you know what, for the cruise, I'll sing. For fuck the tapes and all that stuff, I'll just sing the best I can the way I can. Then they can do whatever they want and then maybe they can do some uh, uh, other stuff. But with that in mind, too, they can also do other songs that he doesn't necessarily have to sing either, right? So I think that if I were them, which I'm not, I would take advantage of this last period and go out go out on a high note. Who gives a fuck if Paul can't sing it perfectly? Nobody expects him to sing it that way right now anyways. So just go out and do a couple of songs that nobody expects. Yeah, well... I- since this is supposed to be the last cruise, <laughs> supposed to be, um, yeah, I would, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they should do a lot of songs, um, but the problem is that they may be a little bit too lazy to to, to try to relearn uh, some <laughs> of the songs that they haven't played in a long time. Uh, depending, you know, it's, it's all, again, like, like you said, it's it's Paul. It's gonna be Paul's decision one way or another. He's he's gonna be the guy. I'm sure Tommy and uh, Eric are saying, yeah, let's do all these other, you know, uh, deep cuts. But it's you they know, did Paul it last the year, final. Ken. They did it last year. Come on, that first show, that first electric show on the cruise. Yeah. They did. We are one, and she's so mm-hmm. European for the very <laughs> first time. So why can't they pull out a couple more songs, you know? They can. They did it all night. I mean, that's true. They but did they take can do it even off. More. They can do even more. That was actually <laughs> looking so back much. on it. Yeah. Um, makes me even angry about the cruise I went on. Uh, <laughs> same. Same. <laughs> take it off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, poor, lo- poor Lottie. I mean, I would lose it. They're just they're just stabbing him in the guts there, and and, the, and then the next night they did making love and all the way, which you know, are still deep cuts. So I I think they can, they can they do have the capability and obviously the willingness. Last year proves that, but I think with them doing two cruises and a, a total of four electric shows, we have talked about it before, that they have to provide some level of balance to the fans on both cruises as mm-hmm. well as those uh, two timers who are going on both cruises and that's a very hard uh, set of balls to juggle you know so do they switch it up from cruise to cruise or do you what do you think I don't think it's fair when there are two timers going on both cruises for there to be four identical sets that's not fair um, to anyone switch two songs probably i i think they have to have a different set that's it (laughs) on each cruise Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. enough of crossover um because they're well actually fuck it they're not going to please anyone they might as well just do what the hell they want anyway and (laughs) be realistic yeah come on Uh, uh, two boats full of cruisers forget it i mean talk, talk about um a tough audience I could just imagine the the the, the sandals stomping around. Com- <laughs> I'm Commander Karen's here to see you. Commander. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no! I I hope they do do something. Do do. Um, no, I hope they do something <laughs> that really does excite us. Just like you know, she's so European did, or you know, we are one. I mean, come on to the point where something off Psycho Circus gets you excited? Well, this year's the 25th anniversary <laughs> of Carnival of Souls. Why not finally? You got Bruce on the boat. Do they dare do something off Carnival of Souls? Now, that would be amazing. 
Is there no. anything on Carnival of Souls that they could do? Well, hate. they could do yeah, hate. hate. Oh, Gene just has to scream. Yeah. They could do hate. Sure. Paul could just take the song off, basically, and they could do hate. Some of They're some really of good. those are pretty low. So how's that range for Paul? You know, comfort level. Um, I think it's going to rain. Rain. Down on me. You know, here's an uplifting song for you now. All right, I'm gonna need a guitar and the and drop. What's the lowest uh, yeah. tuning you can right. go? Talk, talk about really catering to the diehard to be playing something off of that. I mean, that and that's what the cruise is, you know. But that that would really be catering to the diehards if you pulled off something off of Carnival of Souls. That'd be that'd be so pretty fucking happen. amazing. It won't happen. No, no. We can dream on the Kiss FAQ podcast, though. That's right. Yeah, the, the You're the whole... optimist, Ken. You're the optimist. Come on. Let me, let me have my moment of dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. I'm just, cru- I'm just cruising the... Uh... Oh, was Cher a kind of soft Yoko Ono for... Oh, shut up. God. <laughs> God. <laughs> Yoko Ono. That's great. Uh... These are the things that we're thinking about, though. <laughs> that, this, this is what gets posted on the message board. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah. So, what if Ace? And, what if Ace and Peter got wise and never sold the makeup? Mm. Well, it's interesting. Didn't happen. Um, so let's talk about new product come out. Alan Belisha dropping another book already. Goodness me. New one's going to be called You Like My 7-Inch Singles Collection. Kiss Singles. <laughs> I used to collect them. Had over 500, I think it was. Lots of picture sleeves. Yeah. They formed the basis of the FAQ. Um, books on everything are getting done. What's missing? What do you want to read about? <laughs> well, other than... Th- well, things that could possibly exist. Not things that are so poisoned. So we're not going to mention Dubai or Magic. <laughs> Dubai. One, one of the same, if you ask me. This is it's like a Monty Python sketch. Don't mention the war. Don't mention Dubai. So, what is still left to be written about? You know, obviously, Carl Linnaeus and well, team. And at, was it at, um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Um, did the book on Dynasty and Unmasked in Swedish recently? But what what has not been investigated that you think needs to be Mark? Uh, I, the one thing that I'd, I'd love to see, and I know that maybe this is not a big topic of interest amongst maybe some of the Kiss people, but lots of other bands, have, well, not lots of other bands, other bands have done it. Beatles have done it. Zappa has done it. Uh, a book on gear, their recording gear, what they use throughout the years. What was the guitars that Paul used on the first record? The amps. So, I mean, those are the things that uh, me as a guitar player who loves Kiss and loves tinkling in the studio, twinkling around and doing things. Uh, I'd love to know what amp did Ace use? I mean, there was so much debate about this that no, Ace didn't use a Marshall in the first one. He used a Fender amp. He used a Fender Blackface or something like that. But this has been a debate amongst, you know, these kind of people like me, like these guitar nerd people that go online into these forums and talk about, not not the FAQ, but in other ones, like the guitar forums. Uh, I'd love to know this stuff. I mean, I know that Gene used, like, SVTs for like bass amps for recordings for most of the stuff. But, you know, what basses did he use? He used so many different basses throughout the years. He used Pedula, he used Spectres, he used all kinds of stuff. Fenders, apparently, he used. What I'd love to get a book, just like how they did it with the Beatles, just like they did it with Zappa and with other ba- people too. I mean, getting the release of a book on all his basses in his collection. I bought that book. That book was like 200 bucks, but it was worth every cent. I, I loved going through all his different bases in the history on them and what did he use them for and stuff like that. That would be, I think it would be incredible personally for me to know that, you know, on Love Gun, Paul used this guitar for these songs. He used this amp for it, you know, because people are always kind of wondering what kind of, how did they get the sounds that they got? I mean, people assume, oh, it's just them plugging straight into a Marshall horseshit. There's, there's been many times when people have said that they didn't use Marshalls in the studio. So I'd love to know what they used. Anyone still awake? Do you, do you care about what? We, no, uh, no. It, it's it's a very niche area, you know. Yeah. And, and I yeah. wonder how much they actually remember and how much they took notes. Um, 
you know, one, one thing that is interesting in my creatures review is I do have a note of all the drum gear, um, that was ordered for the kiss killers sessions and wow. some of it differs than that which was then used and detailed in modern drummer by eric about the um preachers sessions remember two different albums oh, that's so um there is some of that detail you do have the session photos from 73 where you know the eagle eyed can go through them identify obviously the the most striking thing in those i think is uh aces ovation breadwinner yes. um you know being used Not mr mr les paul using an ovation um you know and, and some of the things like that but in terms of miking i mean when i spoke with michael james jackson i mean he remembered you know generically the sorts of mics that he liked um i i, I just don't think the anyone kept that sort of level of notes you know gene would often say in interviews oh you just used a grabber you know, for, you know, a bass, something cheap and nasty, um, and some of the guitars. But would anyone want to read it if they can't see pictures of the actual things and they're just like a stock photo? Lonnie, what do you want to read? I'd like a Bruce Kulick autobiography. Um, I don't think we're going to, I think, I don't know if we'll get it. And I don't know if, we'll, if we did get it, if we'd get the juicy details that we'd really want surrounding late 95 early 96 around that time period um but i would like to hear a story of a 12 uh, a story of, of bruce kulik but featuring those 12 years he was in the band um with a lot of eric carr stories um mixed in as well it's a forgotten time period of the band it's a time period of the band that the band likes to ignore Mm -hmm. is the non-makeup period so and it's one of my it's, it's when i became a fan it's when um julian became a fan it's when mark became a fan was in the non-makeup period mm -hmm. so i i would like i would like a bruce kulik autobiography of reminiscent of his his time in the you know during the, of his 12 years in the band i think i think that would be and bruce is such a good dude that you know i think it'd be very he could make it very insightful of of how things were and, and, it, and it, it wouldn't be met without its criticism because people are like, oh, you know, tell what really went down, blah, blah, blah. But I, I think Bruce would, would still take the high road because that's the kind of guy he is. Um, and I'd have Bruce talk about Tommy Thayer joining the band and, you know, how he felt moving forward about that. And, um, I think that'd be great. That, that, that's the story I think is missing, is, is the Bruce Kulich story. Could Bruce tell a story with it being kind of self-censored? Uh, because you know he wouldn't burn any bridges. No, absolutely not. Um, That's not the guy he is. But could could he honestly tell the story without without any spice? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, I'm sure there's a lot to talk about that we don't know about. Even still, I would I would assume that he could talk about. I mean, sure, you know, he he would we want the big juicy parts in it that's probably people usually buy these kind of books but i mean what is his what is his choice really does he wait until paul and gene are no longer walking this earth or does he just you know write a book and keep it kind of pg you know yeah i don't want the dirt but i don't want the truth diluted because he sent a manuscript to paul and gene who got their red pens out and said that right. goes against my version of history um i don't like that that hurts my feelings um i don't remember that it can't have happened no and come on the victors write the history and they're the owners of kiss and bruce seems to be the sort of person who would never want to you know step on their toes in any manner which is why i don't think we'll ever see a book from him um because of kind of that role that he's formed in many of the bands that he's worked in and with um i think it put him in too much of a, a a difficult predicament it's like a former government employee who has to send their manuscript to the government office to make sure it's not you know breaking any secrets and a lot of detail gets redacted so you know do do you want to read that but i totally agree i'd love i would love to read it if he, if he could write it in a way that was entertaining again I, i'm not interested in dirt but i am interested in unvarnished truth um 
you know, which are two different things to, to my way of thinking. Ken, what would you like to read? point of view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, I agree with those, both of those, um, <coughs> those ideas. Um, but the one I think that still they could do um, is the continuation of Nothing to Lose. Um, and yeah. st- started off at, I guess, what it would be like Destroyer. Yeah. Um, 76 to like 83, maybe, or something, or whatever. Some solo albums or something like that. Yeah, yeah, or the end of so, Super Kids. Larger Than Life, The Gods yeah. of Thunder, 1976 to 78. Nothing yeah. to lose, they call yeah, they can call it another song, you know, or Great Expectations, call it something, whatever. Um, and uh, I think that'd be a cool book to, you know, to kind of cap it off. Uh, the seventies, at least, um, and uh, because the first one was, that's very very good, and I th- I think it could be done. I think you, they really could do a continuation of that. So yeah, because someone else did all the work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Th- those those interviews, they didn't interview themselves, or they didn't go chasing Binky in the planets, you yeah, know, yeah. to to get the they quotes. Get, they get sharp, you know, can to. Uh, do interviews on that period of time with them if they, if they can do it um, that'd be great i think the sad part to that i would love i would absolutely love that and i actually you know started mocking up something like that going through all the magazines for extensive quotes similar to that to see if it, it how much <coughs> it could be put together um mm-hmm. is that so many people have passed away now you know in the yeah. years since <laughs> kiss did a real book an official book and behind the mask and um and nothing to lose are, are just two two fabulous fabulous books. Mm-hmm. Um, so many people are now gone that that you rely on a lot of archival stuff if you even have those voices and a lot of the stuff that has surfaced in the years since now can't be followed up on because the people are gone. <coughs> so it, it, it's it's a again one of those difficult things. I don't know. I want to see what other people come up with. And that excites me, you know. Again, I've I've had my time, and it's all done. Um, I, I don't have the hunger to kind of do anything other than you know finish up Mask Hysteria and just finish updating the the live books. I want to see what other people come in with new perspectives on old <coughs> ideas, you know, whether it's revamping stuff, uh, new ideas. It can. <coughs> there are so many areas of history. Let's look at the ones that are neglected. You know. Revenge. The 80s. Yeah, Asylum. Well, t- well, Take It Off has been done, which covers a lot of that, yeah. as does Greg Prato's um, Eric Carr story, covers a, a lot of that era. You know, what what really still needs to be done? You know, has it all been said? Or is everything simply uh, something of a rehash? I like the pictorial books, the Kiss Army Spains reissuing their 12-inch singles, um, Color Glossy, Reference Guide. You know, that was great years ago when it first came out. And there, again, are updates to that which have been had. You know, if anyone does a full singles catalog, there's a lot of updates to that sort of things. The discography. Always mm-hmm. new discoveries being made. Mm-hmm. Cork history. Well, that's going to be proven in my review. New details always coming up. And when you see the box and read the liner notes of Creatures you know, Deluxe, you're going to be learning new stuff there as well. So it's never done. It's just uh, how to frame it and how to actually do the work. Because mm-hmm. as some authors find out, <coughs> it's great to have an idea, a little bit more of a challenge to turn it into product and even more to get it into people's hands. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, that's it for this week. That's a whole bunch of different topics from the board. Um, you know, next year is the 50th anniversary. How are you going to celebrate it? Are you going to mark it in any way? Uh, is it going to be rock and roll all night and party every day all year long? No, because that didn't come out <laughs> until the 51st anniversary. Um <laughs> So we appreciate you joining us. Give us your thoughts on all the topics that, uh, or any of the topics that we've discussed today, and we hope to see you next time. So for now, from Lonnie, Mark, Ken, and myself, take it easy. See you in San Pedro. Pedro. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. 
Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.